on this episode of Wrecked. A surprise early snowstorm pushes O'Hare's fleet to the limit. It's still fall, but Chicago doesn't care. 20 degrees outside and I'm sweating bullets. And Bill realizes he needs more iron before the next storm hits. Yeah, I need another truck. He puts the pressure on Joe to make it happen. I'm just getting three weeks. So far, he's peeing down his leg. And a bad day for a semi-driver forces the crew to spend Thanksgiving weekend gathered around a rollover instead of the dinner table. Do you have something better to do on Thanksgiving morning than this? Rollover, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. Four twenty-two, race. Four. All the guys out, uh, so you might uh, connect right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for calling O'Hare Towing. This is Dave. How can I help you? It's only the second week of November, but Chicago's been hit with a massive storm. O'Hare is stretched to the max, and maybe beyond that. With the weather being the way it's being right now, I'm gonna put out at least eight calls today. It's still fall, but Chicago doesn't care. Every driver on the clock is out on the roadways, and the calls keep coming in. Where's Craig Kowski at? 355 and 55. Veteran driver Mike Treg Trykowski is responding to a call from a gasoline tanker stuck on a highway off-ramp. Road conditions at best are terrible. They actually slid up against a guardrail. It was on a bridge directly above a major route through the south suburbs. What made me go off the road was there was a car in front of me was doing a spin out and I had to slow down to avoid him and, and I got slowed down too far and I actually stopped and could not move again. A stranded gasoline tanker, even an empty one, is like a ticking time bomb. This tanker's empty. There's no more gasoline in it. But one cubic foot of vapor is the equivalent to one stick of TNT. If we make one mistake out here, we won't be coming home. This particular part is so dangerous because I'm basically pulling on an aluminum can you ever tried to do that, you can imagine the dangers involved. If he pulls too abruptly or a wheel gets stuck, he could rip it in half. We'll get the trailer away from the wall, then I'll move forward and grab the front. Just like that. Okay. Same play as before. You'll release all the brakes and we'll roll it right up. You're going to aim for this dry cement. made one mistake up there, we wouldn't go home. It would have been a nightmare. I'll follow you. It's 20 degrees outside, and I'm sweating bullets. Well, make your way towards the airport. I got a, uh... As the snow piles up on Chicago's roads, the calls are piling up at O'Hare's dispatch. Hold on one second. 
Earlier this year, Bill moved the base of O'Hare's operation from the 40-year-old North Lake Terminal to a brand new 50,000 square foot facility in Downers Grove. Head over to 1315 Bill put his little brother Joey in charge of the old North Lake Terminal. Trucks are now dispatched from both locations. I'm already here, just uh, let them know I'm outside. But because of this surprise early snowstorm, there's still a two-hour wait for a tow truck. Roll over Mannheim and I-290, Mannheim and I-290. We're running a couple hours behind. Well, that tells me I need another truck. It's always a balancing act to do that in the winter time because you get exceptionally busy. But I don't want anyone to sit on the side of the road. So if, if it's a matter of me adding equipment, well, then we'll do what we got to do to get out there and get people picked up as fast as we can. But ordering a new heavy-duty tow truck from the manufacturer could take months. Bill's got weeks at best. But he's got a plan. Marcy and I went and bought a semi-tractor, it's a T-800 Kenworth, and we found it in an auction. I was all prepared to make it a semi-tractor. Joey and I started talking about it, and we said, hey, we're going to take this tractor, we're going to take the body off of one of our heavy units with mechanical problems, and we're going to make one new truck out of two old ones. But that's a lot easier said than done. Like the body here, the cool boxes. The boom, all the hydraulics, all the controls, they're all coming off this truck, and it's getting put all back on a new truck. It's a good plan, but so far, Joey hasn't made enough headway on the project to keep Bill happy. This wire is all the, the controller for the back of the truck. I don't care what it is. Where does this go? It's going to go in that junction box right next to it. Joey convinced me that it, was gonna, it wasn't going to be a big deal. Winter's coming. It's going to get real exciting here real quick if these guys don't get on the great game plan here. Ryan, did you take the plate off that backside? No. Well, then no, that's up. This was the first big project Joe had under his watch at his terminal without me, and so far he's peeing down his leg. Well, allegedly it's coming up. Allegedly, somebody quits bothering me. Yeah. Just. Put the work out for a week, though. Wait, did I say that out loud? Sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right, I'm not. Coming up, Bill continues to lose confidence in Joey. Hey, I'm way too old and way too fat to be doing all your work all the time, Joe. And a mangled semi puts everyone's Thanksgiving on hold while the crew struggles to deal with a treacherous rollover. Go! This year, Chicago got hit with a freak fall snowstorm. The storm proved to O'Hare towing owner Bill Graziana. He needs another truck before winter hits for real. He put his little brother Joey in charge of getting it built. And he's been riding him to get it done ever since. We're trying to put a truck together before winter time. It's not working in my favor. We're going into the season. That's critical because snow's coming. We can't stop Mother Nature. My awesome boss, today's Tuesday, right? Told me Friday at 4 p.m., hey, put this truck together. And yesterday, he was off the handle telling me, why isn't it done? The mistress took 16 weeks to build. Trike's truck took a year to build. 316, I'm just getting three weeks to build. To finish the new truck, the crew has to remove the fifth wheel, shorten the fuel tank, and stretch the frame of the new tractor before they can attach the new tow body to it. Right now I have the trike working on taking off all the other stuff of the one tractor that we're gonna stretch the frame on. He's been doing it so many years, he knows exactly what I'm asking him to do. This back section is all part of the record. This is gonna be put on a new chassis. As the early snow melts away, Joey and his crew know they have to hurry. There's no telling when the next storm could hit. And while Joey and Trike are busy finishing the new truck, Bill and Marcy are trying to decide who will drive it. Who gets the new truck? It's in negotiations right now. I have who I would give it to, and I think Bill has who he would give it to, so I just need to give him, convince him to give it to the one I think it needs to go to. Traditionally, how things work is a guy comes on driving a flatbed. He'll do that for six months to a year, maybe two. Then the 600 series, which is our medium duties, is a step up from a flatbed. 
And then the 300s is the final step. The biggest thing that I have to look for is the will and the want. Do they want to drive a bigger truck? Are they willing to learn? It is a real big deal for a driver to get a new truck. <laughs> what can I say? I just want a bigger truck. I outgrew this truck, so I'm kind of like on the boss about getting a bigger truck. Three or four, Steve. I'm going to need you to go to Indiana. Check the train. It's the night before Thanksgiving, and Bill Graziana is about to head home for a few days off. But before he can get out of the office, he runs into Joey. No, I didn't. Uh, what are you doing here? You're gonna pick those eye rings up. There's no way you're gonna be there at seven. Oh, so now all of a sudden you're in a big hurry? Can you acknowledge that you told me like the tow truck like Friday? Can you just tell me that? Friday? Yeah, Friday. Two weeks ago, Friday. Two. Marcy! <laughs> it was a Friday, but it wasn't last Friday. You like broken them? record, right? I know. Hey, how are you? Oh, poor Joe. Oh, poor Joe, my ass. Get the damn truck apart. Joe, in case you were wondering how much time you had to work on this truck, this is a puddle in the winter. See, it's, it's called ice. Yeah, winter's coming. You see it? But just when Bill thinks he's done with Joey, he sees the toolboxes that are supposed to go on the new truck Joey's building out at North Lake, sitting in the lot at Downers Grove. Son of a bitch. Why does everything have to turn into such a project all the time? I'm way too old and way too fat to be doing all your work all the time, Joe. Don't worry, Joe, I got it. I don't know, this winter's gonna definitely put me to the brink. Blood pressure just flip through the roof and you're gonna choke somebody out. That's it, I'm done. I'm going home, eat some turkey. Coming up, Joe's Thanksgiving break from his brother is short-lived. Hi, hey, Joe. Happy turkey day, brother. But things get scary when the steel starts flying. Go! Bill, I just want to let you know we've got a rollover. It's going to be on 55 southbound, just north of 6. Let me know when you're in route. It's 3.30 a.m., Thanksgiving morning. Bill's called from bed to a major wreck on I-55. A 40-ton tractor trailer drove off the interstate, through a fence, and rolled into a deep ditch. The force of the crash was so strong, the cargo in the 53-foot trailer exploded and is strewn all over the embankment. I need about 10 or 15 pallets and some shrink wrap, so I want 806 in our relief trailer, dumpster, bobcat, and little dump trailer. Call me after you have that executed, okay, because I'm going to need a half a dozen bodies. The truck driver's uh, car cut him off and he went into the ditch, but based on what I've seen so far, though, the speed of the crash was pretty good. He must have been going pretty, pretty well. Joey soon joins Bill on the scene, and they begin working on a plan to get the mangled truck out of the ditch. This is one of those where I've got to eat an elephant, and I'm not quite sure if I should start at the, the nose or the tail. It's laying everywhere. So as soon as we clear that tree chunk, or that tree clump, then we'll come out this way. Until this other guys get here, we'll, we'll start working on the load. The plan? Pick this thing up and tow it away. There might be a few steps in, ahead of that, but that's the basic plan. While Bill and Joey are clearing a path to the truck, Cedric and Jose show up to help. We're just going to drag that tractor out from underneath it and uh, pull it up here and upright it. and. That way we can get to the front of the trailer. The crew prepares to tow the tractor up a steep embankment by hooking chains up to the steel eyelets on the front of the chassis. Hey! On Thanksgiving morning, we had quite a bit of load to clean up. We opted to separate the truck from the trailer. And we had to winch it on its side, probably 150 feet to a clearing away from trees and where we had taken a fence section down to bring the truck up onto a frontage road. Just as Joey starts to pull the massive tractor up the hill, the rest of the crew arrives. Happy Thanksgiving, Rich. Looking forward to the day off today. Stayed up late, thought I was going to sleep in. Six o'clock, the next call went off. But here we are. I'm thankful for you guys. 
I had to come see my second family. They missed me. Do you have something better to do on Thanksgiving morning than this? Roll over, I wouldn't miss it for the world. The crew that happened to be out there that day, if they had the choice, turkey's good cold, you can DVR football games, and this is like our own little towing world Super Bowl. And it was nice to have those kind of guys on that job. What your game plan with this is, is we're gonna try to salvage these bundles intact so we don't have to put fingerprints on everything. While the crew gets busy cleaning up the scattered cargo, Joey gets back to pulling the 15,000 pound tractor out of the ditch. Got me a big one. He's cocky now, but he's about to get a reminder of how quickly things can go wrong. One of the steel eyelets snaps off the tractor and goes flying back towards Joey. And when it shattered, it shattered and it shattered loud and the truck dropped and five, 10 pounds of steel flying around. It was a scary deal. Came really close to hitting me. I almost died. It could have sent someone to the hospital and we were damn lucky that nobody got hurt. Woo. With only one eyelet left, Dragging the heavy tractor up the embankment isn't going to work. They're going to have to improvise. We got to do something to drag it on this front. Back is chopped up. I'm going to roll it over in the ditch, grab the rear end, pull it out like that. That's got you. Joe has Cedric attach his winch line to the back of the tractor, and then they wrap a chain around the front. The body of the tractor is already destroyed, so they're not worried about what the chain is about to do to it. Once the 3 8 inch chain rips through the fiberglass body, Joe has a solid grip on the truck. With the tractor now on flat land, Joe and Cedric can now upright it. Finally, Cedric can tow the mangled tractor back to the shop, and Joey can move on to the overturned trailer. Here, call that what, like 345, 4, 920 AM. I'm going to go get nasty with the guys, or run some winch line down to the trailer, winch it up to me, flip it in the ditch, and winch it out. Hey, extend your outrigger, get your boom out. There you go. Now that it's up onto the road, Joey and Tony hook their trucks up to the trailer and get ready to upright it. See it? On the trailer. Pick one up, then watch the other one. TJ, go get your car. Hey. All right. Better hurry. Boom out. My dinner should be done in about an hour, so this could be perfect. I got time. We're not eating until 4, so we'll be just fine. So I'm going to go home and get a shower and stuff myself like a pilgrim. While the rest of the gang heads home for Thanksgiving dinner, Joe heads back to the shop to put in some more hours on the new truck. Coming up, Joe's almost done with the new truck, but it's not soon enough for Bill. I've never stretched a truck frame. I've never put the tow truck crane on. Hey, Dwight! Yeah. Come here, I want to talk to you. And Bill wants to have some words with one of his drivers. This is the first big project that Joe has had to manage, and he is peeing down his leg. It's now been a few weeks since the Thanksgiving rollover, and even though it's almost finished, Bill is concerned that the truck Joey is building won't be ready for action by the time winter hits. The major work is completed, 
and is being prepped for painting, but there's still work to be done. Oh. You have to give the kid guidance. You can't just say, take the truck apart. He telling you how good he is, and there's nothing yeah, more he needs to you, learn. you got to give him Stop guidance. It. You're making excuses for him. I'm not just making excuses for him. If you gave him clear directions on what you wanted, he would follow them. Well, I guess there's three different opinions now. Now my leadership is being questioned. Okay. Joe's put in long hours and burned gallons of midnight oil to try to prove to his brother he's up to the task. I've never stretched a truck frame, I've never put the tow truck crane on, but I've done the tow truck bodies, and I've done electrical, I've done all the wiring. Finally, three weeks after he started, Joey's putting the finishing touches on truck 316. I'm pretty psyched about it. Just in time, we're supposed to get some snow tonight. All in all, I'm very happy with the end result. Hey, Joe, can you hit the door for me? Sure. I give Joe a B plus on the whole process of that truck. All in all, it came together well, but it was very stressful because of the lack, lack of time that we had. With the new truck complete, there's only one last thing to do. Hey, Dwight! Yeah? Come here, I want to talk to you. What's up, Buckley? I want to... The uh, transition in trucks. We, we talked about it a little bit, and I know you had put your hat in the ring with Joey about it. And uh, Marcy and I decided that we feel that this is a nice step for you. Congratulations. It's, it's I a big appreciate deal, it. right? We do. I appreciate the yeah. new truck. I appreciate keep it. it. And keep it, and keep it nice. Shave. Oh, oh. absolutely. <laughs> keep it nice. Absolutely. The truck okay. that he normally drives, 607, was something that he was very comfortable in and he needed to be challenged. And this is a natural progression for him to step up and start driving a bigger truck. I'm very happy that the bosses gave me a new truck to drive and play around with and have fun with. So. I'm very, very happy about this. 316 instead of 607. I think I'm gonna have to play that on the lottery, on the lotto. If I play this and I win on the lottery, everybody gonna think something wrong with me. Gonna look like my pocket got the mumps. And don't nobody else play that number, because I don't want y'all to get rich. Let me play it first and get rich, then y'all can go on and play it. So bigger truck, more chrome, more responsibilities, bigger toes. 316, AKA the mutt. Right there, 316, baby.